How do we handle objections from clients? As we move forward in the sales cycle, all of a sudden those little things start coming up. Can you do it differently? Can you do it cheaper? Can you possibly do it in a faster time frame? How do I know this will work for me and my business? As sales providers, as entrepreneurs, as value producers, we want to do whatever it takes to get the deal. We're this close, this close. You can taste it. Your mouth starts salivating. And like somebody had just thrown a wrench in the spokes of your bicycle, you're completely thrown off. We want to be able to continue the conversation, but the wrong thing is not answering the objection. The wrong thing is just going ahead and saying whatever you think it is. What you ultimately want to do is you want to ask yourself, where is this objection coming from? What is being spurred from this conversation? And instead of just answering the objection with the answer that you think you've somehow crafted perfectly with so much poise that it melts like chocolate in a fondue fountain, what you want to do is you want to ask them, a question. By spinning the game around and asking them a question to that objection, to that question that the client has poised to you, what you're ultimately doing is you're getting them to give you the right answer, whatever answer they were looking for. And if they're not giving you the right answer, ultimately it gives you more clarity on what the objection is is trying to address. For instance, if you had a client that went ahead and said, listen, I get it. I love everything we're seeing here. How do I know this is going to work for my business? Can you provide me with some testimonials? Fair enough. And typically what we would do as value providers, because we're already salivating like a dog chewing a bone, we say, yep, absolutely here. Boom, 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 boom. Go check them out. Come back to me when you're ready. But we've slowed down the sales cycle. What we ultimately want to do is say, yes, Mrs. Customer, I get that you'd like to know if this works for your business. What concerns do you have right now that this won't? Why do you feel that everything I presented to you so far won't apply to you and your business? The examples I provided you on the success we've had with other clients what would be different about your business? And if they still insist on seeing testimonials, which is fine, who would you like me to engage you with? Right? What specific conversations are you concerned about so I can match you with the right person? This isn't just about reaching out to your top three gold mine clients and saying, listen, can you provide me another testimonial, another testimonial, another testimonial. It's about bridging relationships and connections with that. And when we ask those questions with those objections, ultimately what we're doing is we're letting the client convince themselves that the question they asked might not be that important. When they answer, well, I guess you're right. Or what I'm concerned about is dot, dot, dot. Now you can answer that because you have a very specific need that you are addressed. What I'm concerned about is if this doesn't work, Kim, how do we proceed after that? If this doesn't work, what does this look like in terms of payment solutions, in terms of longevity for the company, dot, 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 dot. We can address that and we can choose to either dig deeper with even more questions or we address now just the superficial. Because when an objection comes up, sometimes it's coming from a very gut instinct. It's very big, it's very powerful. And when we start to open the layers, we realize that what's in the middle isn't that important. If you want to overcome the objections your clients are giving you, start asking better questions to get past them. Find out where they're stunning from so that you can become a sales knockout. <music>